Welcome to Fast Draw 101. I'm Howard Darby. In this video, I'm going to give you guidance on the gun and holster you should get, the shooting style you should use to start with, and the next steps you can take to join in on the fun of the fastest time sport in the world. Shooters on the line. Shooters set. Before I get into my recommendations, I'm going to give a quick background on what this video is trying to accomplish and the obstacles I've seen for new shooters. But if you want to get right to the recommendations, you can skip ahead to this point in the video. Over the last few years, the main contacts I get from people who watch my videos come from those asking how to get into the sport and the type of gun and shooting styles they should use. I had created a video that talked about buying your first fast draw gun and another talking about the thumbing and fanning draws, but those were more intended to introduce you to all the options available to you as a new shooter. From the questions I get, it's obvious there's some confusion of really where to begin, and some people were putting together different bits and pieces of those videos and going down the wrong paths. It became obvious that a bit more guidance on how to start in fast draw would be helpful so in this video i'll give you my four recommendations for anyone starting out in the sport the reasons why i chose those paths then i'll also provide some information on why you may not want to follow those suggestions now i know some people have strong opinions on the path people should take when they start out due to their backgrounds and allegiances to one organization or another i've competed in most of the organizations in north america and have fun with all of them and even for the few I haven't competed with, I know quite a bit about them. So the following recommendations are made in an attempt to try to get you started on a path where you can be competing and having fun in the sport of fast draw without wasting time or money. In this video, I reference the Cowboy Fast Draw Association a bit. Currently, the CFDA is the largest organization in the sport, and they have a lot of information on their website that's good reference material for new shooters in any sort of fast draw. No matter if you're intending to shoot with a CFDA, WFDA, OFDA, WFPG, XFDA, or any other organization in North America, the recommendations I'm about to give you will allow you to shoot in any of their contests. My hope is that after you finish watching this video, you'll have a better understanding of how to proceed and know where you can go to get more information and help. So let's get right into it. Number one. Get a stock 45 caliber single action revolver in 4 and 5 eighths or 4 and 3 quarter inch barrel length. There are slight differences in the length of barrel lengths depending on the manufacturer, but look for 4.62 inches or 4.75 inches, also known as 4 and 5 eighths or 4 and 3 quarter inch barrel length. You can check the Cowboy Fast Draw Association website in their rules section for a list of approved six guns. And I also have a link to that list in the description below this video. Make sure the exact gun you want to buy is listed there, including the specific grip frame and options. The main guns you'll see in competition may include the Ruger New Vaquero, Colt Army, Uberti Cattleman, or Beretta Stampede, but there are a few others on the list, so if you find a different gun you're wondering about, check the list. One thing to be aware of is that if you decide to buy a Colt, you'll be paying a premium simply for having that name, and you'll find that some of the other brands are just as good and sometimes even more reliable. The reason I suggest starting with a stock 45 single action is because with this gun you can shoot in any fast draw contest in North America, even ones where other shooters are allowed to use the fanning method. Also, there are a number of organizations where only 45 caliber is allowed because the ammunition is supplied at the major contest and they only provide the one caliber so everyone is on a level playing field. So that's the caliber you want to buy. The barrel should be the 4 and 5 eighths or 4 and 3 quarter length because that's the shortest allowed in the sport and any extra length on the barrel could increase your draw time depending on the style you're using, especially when you advance to a level where you're trying to minimize your draw distance to get faster times. However, if you already have a single action revolver in a longer barrel length, you can start with that as there are a number of people using the 5.5 inch barrel or even the 7.5 inch barrel and in CFDA they even have their own category for people using that longer barrel length. Even if you already have a smaller caliber single action in 44 or 38, there are some wax bullet manufacturers who sell bullets and shells in those calibers, so you can try fast draw with your existing gun without spending the money on a new one to confirm you like it and want to start competing. There are no contests where you must fan, so even in the contests where fanning is allowed, you'll also see people that are thumbing and often doing very well. Many shooters have competed using the thumbing draw in major contests where fanning is allowed and won those contests, so a good thumber can beat a good fanner at any time. Being consistent and hitting a high percentage is the main key in winning any contest. 
starting with a thumbing gun will allow you to get started and shoot with any club in any competition then once you've mastered that you can try a fanning style when shooting with an organization like the WFDA and sometimes the OFDA that allow fanning. Also there are a lot more contests that allow only stock guns than there are that allow fanning and even when shooting in an organization that does allow fanning guns there's almost always a second division that only allows the stock guns and thumbing. So starting by thumbing a stock gun will allow you the opportunity to shoot as much as possible no matter what other styles the contest may allow. Number two, get a holster legal for the Cowboy Fast Draw Association. With a Mexican loop holster like this, just like with the 45 caliber single action in 4 and 5 8 and 4 and 3 quarters, you'll be able to use it in any fast draw contest in North America. It will give you the most versatile holster to start with and one that will be all you will ever really need for many of the organizations. You can check the CFDA rulebook for the holster specifications. If looking for a holster manufacturer online, make sure to check that they mention it's CFDA approved and maybe call and talk to the manufacturer to make sure they understand it needs to be CFDA legal. There are a number of manufacturers out there that make legal holsters and I've only used a small percentage of them so I won't make any suggestions. But you can talk to local shooters or check a couple of the fast draw pages on Facebook for suggestions and post your questions to shooters to find out where they bought their holsters. The links to the CFDA rules and the two main Facebook groups are in the description below. As a hint, you can use the search icon at the top of the Facebook groups for the word holster to find posts that shooters have already made about the holsters they purchase or where they're asking questions about specific manufacturers. Number three, learn the thumbing method. As already mentioned, the gun you want to get is a stock single action, which means you'll be wanting to use the thumbing draw. Technically, you are able to fan that gun, but because of the rules of some organizations, that when you're fanning you must hold your hand to the side of your body before the light comes on and because you can't use a fanning hammer it makes fanning difficult and slow so the thumbing draw is the only feasible draw style you can use. Also the only gun that reliably holds up to fanning is a customized old model Ruger Blackhawk which is a gun that's not allowed in CFDA and many organizations because it has adjustable sights and isn't a model that's authentic to the Old West. In addition those same organizations don't allow customized guns with the special tuning required for fanning, so thumbing is the best style to start with since it's legal in all organizations. To go a bit further with that, if you try to use a non-customized gun with the fanning method and you're doing it with any speed, you will very likely cause damage to it. I had to fan both of these guns in competition when shooting WFDA double target events where the second target is fanned and within a few months I had to send both of them to a gunsmith to replace the cylinders with new ones after the fanning caused the cylinder notches to be ruined after only a few hundred shots at a cost of many hundreds of dollars. So I highly suggest never trying the fanning style with a stock gun. Number four. Before you buy your equipment, I suggest visiting a local club if there's one nearby or at least contact the clubs that are closest to your location. You can check on the CFDA website for their list of affiliated clubs or ask on Facebook about clubs and shooters in your area to find where you can go to try Fast Draw and learn more about it. The main Fast Draw Facebook group has members from a number of the organizations so it's a good place to get input to find out about local shooters from any organization that might be nearby. Even if there isn't a club really close to you, contacting the clubs that are nearby, even if they're a few hundred miles away in a different state, can possibly point you to shooters in your area that they know about. Shooters from your area may be traveling to their contests and may be looking for other shooters in their area to form a new club. You might even find local shooters that have equipment they're looking to sell or at least know the best contacts you can use locally. Bonus tip. Do a tune job on your gun. When you buy a new gun, you may find the hammer pull is quite stiff and the action may be rough. For the first few years I was practicing the thumbing draw, I was using this gun pretty much as it came from the factory. It's the original new Vicaro that's had some engraving done on it, but the only internal modifications I did was to cut a few coils off the hammer springs so the hammer pull was lighter. The smoothness wasn't too bad and after thousands of rounds of practice it smoothed out from use and now it has a very smooth action. I bought these Ruger New Vaqueros a few years later and I did a tune job myself by going on YouTube and searching for videos on tuning a Ruger New Vaqueros actions. I watched a few, then smoothed the hammer, trigger and a few internal parts so the whole action was better. 
You can search for how to tune the gun you purchase and very likely find videos specific to the model you bought. Your other option would be to find a local gunsmith that knows how to work on single action revolvers. You can ask around and see if there's any cowboy action clubs in the area and ask them who does the work on their revolvers since the tuning would be pretty much the same. Just make sure no stock parts are replaced with parts that change the functionality because many organizations have limits on the changes you can do to a gun that you'll use in competition. So those are my main suggestions on the direction to go when starting in fast draw. But here are some situations where you may not want to follow those recommendations. The first reason you may not want to follow my recommendations on getting a stock gun for thumbing is if you find that the club nearest to you is not shooting the cowboy style of fast draw and many of the members are doing the fanning draw. I had done a video on the longest running fast draw club in existence, the Thunderbird Fast Draw Club near Vancouver, Canada, where I started in the sport. And they're a club where members are doing both the fanning and thumbing draws. In a case like this, you may want to look into the options of a fanning gun. You can still do the thumbing draw with a stock gun since even clubs that do the fanning style generally also have members who do the thumbing style, but in this situation you have the option to go a different direction. You'll also probably have people in that club that can advise you on where you can get a well-built fanning gun that will last and not break down quickly. A well-built fanning gun can last for decades and that's what you're looking for in any of the equipment you purchase. Secondly, you may be someone who wants to shoot the absolute fastest there is. There are not many people who fall into this category. Most people just want to get into fast draw and have fun using the Old West style of shooting. But I've met one or two and they decided to go with a fully customized fanny gun and the twist style over a stock gun and the thumbing method. Thumbers can get close to fanners in speed, but in North America you'll find that fanning with the traditional dump style or the twist style, you'll be faster than the fastest thumber. Although in most situations that difference will only be four to six hundredths of a second between a top thumber and a top fanner. However, as mentioned earlier, there are a lot more contests where only thumbing is allowed than there are contests where fanning is also allowed, so you will be limiting your ability to compete if you only have a fanning gun. So here's my summary of recommendations. 1. Get a stock 45 caliber single action revolver in 4 and 5 eighths or 4 and 3 quarter inch barrel length. 2. Get a Mexican drop loop holster or any other holster legal for CFDA. Number 3. Learn the one-handed thumbing draw. Number four, contact a club or shooters in your area to have someone local that can help you learn the sport or ask questions online. I hope that helps. Please check the links in the description below for the references I mentioned and welcome to the world of fast draw.